Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at a railway station today in Birmingham. We're at Smevik Galton Bridge. It's a fairly modern station. It opened in 1995 when this section of line here, which goes that way to Birmingham Snow Hill, was reopened. It was known as the Jewellery Line. So this station has the sister stations of the Hawthorns and Jewellery Court, so all built in a similar style. So perhaps one day I'll do a video on the Jewellery Line and those stations. But today I've come to show you Smevik Galton Bridge station and of course the bridge it takes its name from. Now as we go down here you start to see, you can see there's sort of trees there, there's a bit of a gap then there's no trees. And if you look on this side you can sort of see we're actually up in the trees and the reason for that is because we are above the Birmingham Main Line Canal, not railway canal, the canal is called the Birmingham Main Line. There's a delayed train by the sounds of it and if we look through here there is the Galton Bridge, which is what we've come to have a look at. It was a bridge built by Thomas Telford in 1829. So what we're going to do, we're going to go out the railway station and we're going to go and have a look. We obviously can't use the lifts, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so the lifts aren't working. That's, um, yeah, so you can see there's the lifts there. Uh, what we need to do is obviously get out the station. Now, down below us are the platforms on the other railway line which passes through this station, the railway line which runs between Birmingham and Wolverhampton. So when we get up and out the station, I'll be able to show you where that is. So as we go up the steps this way. So I'll just tell you a bit about why they opened this station. You've got two railway lines which cross here. And there wasn't a railway station, but there was Smevik Rolf Street, which is still open, and um, there was Smevik West, which is no longer open. So the idea was, of creating this station, you could um, create a nice interchange, uh, effectively of a high and low level. So that's the high level platforms, where we've just come from. The low level platforms are just down there, and they run parallel with the Birmingham Mainline Canal. So the way out of the station is that way. I'm just going to quickly show you the low level platforms, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so we've come over the bridge now. That's the high level platforms down there. I'll just see if I can show you through here. So if you look through the window, you can see, I know it's not a great view, but there's the low level platforms. So that is on the line from Birmingham New Street to Wolverhampton. So, what used to happen was before the, the jewellery line was opened, trains that uh, what the high level platforms now serve beyond here to Stourbridge would have come out of Birmingham New Street and they'd have stopped at Smevik West. So there's a spur of track which is still there, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And, um, ooh, sounds exciting. Heard a very um, high-pitched horn. Maybe it wasn't a train. So, from here, so these are the high-level platforms. The junction is just the other side of that bridge. So we're going to go and have a look at that in a moment once we're out of the station. And then, of course, we will go and see the Galton Bridge. So the... Yeah, just doing a, a video for YouTube. Have a look. It's called Henry's Adventures. Local wondering what I'm doing. So as we come out here, no ticket barriers. Had my ticket ready. I've got a West Midlands Day Ranger, which is a brilliant ticket. You can travel all around the West Midlands without having to worry, you know, and um, just travel all day, really. It's very good value. So back to the other station. So I'm going to take you across the road. The line we've just come on goes under there. I'm going to show you where the junction is and where Smevik West is. So underneath the road here, there's a spur and that connects the two lines. So what I want to know, if anyone can tell me, are there any passenger trains at all that use this spur? Because if there is, I would love to go on one because it's a bit of track I haven't done. So as soon as we get across this section of the road, I'll be able to show you the bit of track, which as far as I'm aware, no passenger trains currently use. Just gotta wait to cross the road now. There we go. So as we come over here, looking directly below us, you can see this section of track. There's a mile post down there, it's number four, so we must be four miles from Birmingham New Street. And up there is the junction. Now, Smevik West was just round there. So we'll just keep 
the camera going while I go around here. I'm going to walk to where Smevik West Station was. It is a little bit of a way by road, not far, but I'll probably pause the camera in a moment and run around there and show you. In fact, I, whether the camera will pick it up, I think I can see where it is. And um, there was a rather amusing blunder when they opened Smevik Galton Bridge with closing Smevik West. So Smevik West was supposed to close in 1995, but they made an administrative blunder and they couldn't legally close it. So the station stayed open for another year, but only one train a week stopped there. So you probably at one point could get on the train there and get off the train. I can actually see the old waiting shelters are still there. It might be hard to see, but just beyond the junction, the platforms are still there. You can probably just see the platform. You could get on the train from there and get off here. That must be a journey of what, maybe um, 200 yards? Must be one of the shortest journeys possible on network rail. So I'm gonna take you for a walk along here. We're gonna see what we can see of the station from above. Also from walking along this path here, uh, by the way, I've never actually been down here before, so I'm discovering it as I show it to you. There is the junction. So I want to know, that bit of track over there, are there any passenger trains? I don't think there are, but I might be wrong. So if someone knows, then please do comment and tell me. And um, I'll have to come and get another, like I said, another West Midlands Day Ranger. It's getting a bit wet, this one, because of today's weather. Get another West Midlands Day Ranger and do that bit of track, or maybe, I'll just um, buy a ticket from Smith at Rolf Street, which is further down that way. So you can just see the tunnel now over there. On the other side of the tunnel, there's a junction with the low level lines, which pass through Smith at Galton Bridge. Now, if we come up to here, I don't know if this was the main entrance to the station, but look at this. It's, um, you can see a path. Perhaps this was the main entrance. Looking down here, if you have a look, the way out sign is still there. There's still some station signs. I didn't expect that. I was expecting to see platforms, but I was not expecting like a full abandoned intact station. I know the ticket office was demolished, which I believe was on the road up here. Let's just let you see through the Palisade fence. I appreciate it's not the best view, but um, what I'll do, I will take some pictures and post them on the Facebook page so you'll be able to have a better look. But that is quite cool, the fact we've got a whole abandoned station area. I've got a good view there, you can see the abandoned shelter. There's a way out sign, even some of the platform lights are still intact, they're not actually switched on. But um, it's quite interesting to see how it's just been abandoned like that and left intact. I'd love to have come on one of those trains though. To make things even funnier, there's actually a train stopped there now. It must be waiting at a signal. I'm not sure what the reason for holding a train there is, but the station that we've come to see, which is closed, currently has a train stopped at it. Uh, let's have a look. So there we are. Trains still stop at Smivik West, just that you cannot get on or off. Pity really, because I could have walked down there, jumped on it and had a lift back. So I'm um, not sure why that stopped there. I think where we're coming to now is possibly where the ticket office would have been. There's a road just across here. There's the, the train, the class 172, which has stopped at the former Smevik West station. We're coming to here. There's a road here and the train is departing. Now, I think if someone could confirm this, I think the station building possibly was here somewhere but i don't know entirely that train is now departing so if we're quick we might just see the train disappear there we go can you see that there goes a the train departing the abandoned smevik west station now if we just have a look here i think the ticket office must have been either there or there I can, I've just seen there's a path going down. You can see the old abandoned station path. Can you see that? Just down there, running down to the platforms. And there's some more lights still intact. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna walk back to Smivik Galton Bridge, and we're gonna go and see the Galton Bridge 
which um, I brought you here to see. Coming to look at this was um, just an added bonus really, so I'm going to run over back to the station now. So I've come back to Smevik Galton Bridge Station, which had our little trip to the abandoned Smevik West Station. Now let's go and see the Galton Bridge itself. It's a rather cool sculpture there, which looks like it's got a model of the Galton Bridge on top. So let's go over and under the Galton Bridge. So the Galton Bridge was built in 1829 by Thomas Telford. It, when it was built, it was the largest single span bridge in the world it really is once you're on it you realize how big it is and it was named after a one of the company's shareholders samuel galton hence galton so that's why it's called the galton bridge and if you look down there the, this is the other railway line what currently has the low level platforms lines out of new street and if we go over here we get a much better view of this end of the low level platforms and you can see the station. So you can see there's currently a train on the high level bridge. Below it is the low level platforms. And we're now crossing the Galton Bridge itself. So it takes us over the railway. So I assume the bridge must have been here first. And then they put the railway in second. And then I assume that railway came third. Obviously it would have been open to all road traffic once, but now it's purely pedestrianised. There's a train departing what on what's known as the jewelry line towards Birmingham Snow Hill and probably beyond probably going to Dorwich you can see how high up we are above the canal it's um yeah quite exciting now if we have a look on this side there's something else a bit more modern there's Galton Tunnel down there so my aim is to take you down to Galton Tunnel we're going to go and have a look and that tunnel I said is modern it was built basically to put a road interchange above the canal and the railway so there's a modern railway tunnel and on the other side of the modern railway tunnel is the other junction with the line which trains would have taken to um through smevic west so we get here there's a canal cycleway one day i'm just going to hire a bike i think and just have you know a month off work i'm just going to cycle around all the canals of birmingham or maybe hire a boat one or the other so it says the new mainline canal now before we go down to have a look I just want to show you something else just to show you how um, exciting this area is for canals so we walk through this industrial part of Birmingham as I said that's the new mainline canal but there's also the old mainline canal by the way where we started the video see this bridge here that's the railway we would have been just the other side of that fence when I started on the platforms so I'm just going to show you the old mainline canal and then we're going to go and have a look at the new mainline canal probably about a mile in that direction there is a junction where the two join i'm not going to do that today that's a bit far it's not the best of weathers but from this bridge we get a fairly good view there's the old mainline canal and of course the railway line which takes you to snow hill on this side it's um quite a lot of trees so can't see a lot uh can't see anything they must have made a cut and cover tunnel because look there's nothing down there i didn't know about that but they must have like i said when they built that road that roundabout there would have had to create a new tunnel on the on the canal and the railway they've also had to create one here but it looks like that bridge becomes the northern portal of the tunnel so hadn't planned to but as soon as we're here let's just go down to the old mainline canal and let's have a look at and inspect this tunnel i won't take you through it um if i had a bit longer i'd walk the mile down to the junction but like i said i think that's for another day so here we are here is what appears to be a bridge that's ended up becoming a tunnel it looks very muddy down i haven't really got the right footwear for doing too much muddy walks along canals today um admittedly this was more meant to be more of an urban walk but oh hello <laughs> train coming um we'll see that in a moment yes yeah, so as we come down here look you can see how so it's actually called the summit bridge and there is the modern summit tunnel so it starts just inside the bridge so there is a little bit of daylight showing above the bridge so that's the summit tunnel and then this is known as the summit railway bridge so it's quite cool down here between a bridge and a tunnel quite like it 
So I'll just let you have another look at the tunnel, the bri summit bridge and summit, summit bridge and summit tunnel. And now let's go to the back to the Gulfin Bridge. I've been over it, of course. We really should go under it once we've gone up all these steps on this second little unplanned excursion. But Birmingham, like as, as any Brummie will tell you, Birmingham has more canals than Venice, which is true. The reason being is Venice has a lot of canals in a small area. Birmingham has a lot of miles of canals covering a much wider area. So that is the reason how Birmingham comes to have more canals than Venice. We are now coming back up and out. Go back to the Galton Bridge now. We're gonna go under it and we're gonna have a look at the, the other new tunnel. Funny but this industrial estate stuck here between two canals. Give you a view over the Galton Bridge. Now let's go down and underneath the Galton Bridge. There's a train on the railway line over there. Class 350. So yeah, it's quite a good place for coming and seeing trains. If you were to, you know, hire a boat or cycle around the canals of Birmingham, you see plenty of trains as well. So the path goes down here, has a hairpin bend and takes us right down to underneath the Galton Bridge. So where the actual hairpin bend there is, that's above the modern tunnel. Some cyclists there just cycling into the tunnel. And there's the bridge. It'd be quite good if they could cut these trees down. Fun I should say there are some men with chainsaws down there and then that would reveal the bridge in all its glory. I might get, look there's actually a man up in the tree. Looks like they are, I might be getting my wish here. I think they are actually cutting down those trees. Having a look here, you can see how big and how high up the Galton Bridge is. And this, this um, is the top of the modern tunnel. There's actually a man up in the tree. As we come down here, there's the Galton Bridge. And you can see another train at Smithwick Galton Bridge Station. Having a look at the railway bridge, you can see how they've had to put the platforms on as like an extension to the bridge because when the bridge was built it wasn't ever probably designed to house a railway station it was designed just to be a bridge so you can see how they've put the concrete platforms onto the bridge we're now directly below the Galton bridge pretty large and you can hear the train departing so we've now walked under the bridge that's called Smevik Station Bridge. So one day we're perhaps going all the way up there. But I want to finish the video by taking you through the modern tunnel. So really in this video it's been a bit of old railways, a bit of modern railways, a bit of old canal bridges and a bit of modern canal tunnels. A bit of everything canal and railway. We just need a barge to come along now. That would complete everything. So this is the Galton Tunnel. I'm just going to let you see the, the bridge behind us. I like it down here. It's quite nice and um, peaceful away from the, the noise of all the streets above. There's the tunnel. There's the winding path we just come down. So let's go into the tunnel. It's not too long. Like I said, it is a modern tunnel. So, um, you know, it was built just to take the canal under the roadway. I feel like though no, we've got to finish the video on the other side of the tunnel and we get there I know you can't see much of me I'm just going to pause the camera now and um, I'll carry on talking when you can actually see me rather than just see a ghostly silhouette of me so we are just coming to the other end of the tunnel quite echoey here we are this is the end of the Galton Tunnel the modern Galton Tunnel there's a Half going up there, that'd probably take me back to the station.